Thanks for joining us and welcome to today's event on biological dentistry brought to you by Innovative Medicine. Today you're going to hear from several different practitioners. First up is Dr. Philip Malika of the American College of Integrative Medicine and Dentistry who travels around the world giving lectures on ozone therapy as well as some of the other advanced techniques that you're going to hear about today. Following him is going to be Dr. Carla Yamashiro from Washington who received her advanced education in general dentistry as well as a doctorate in dental surgery from the University of Missouri at Kansas City. And following Dr. Yamashiro, we're going to hear from two practitioners, Dr. Jill Morris and Dr. Wilbur Backey, who together run the Sarasota Dentist Clinic and are both biologic dentists as well as naturopathic physicians. So here to start things off and give us a little bit of an introduction as to what biologic dentistry is, is Dr. Phil Malika. Well, I think the concept, you know, was really developed when we realized that, uh, you know, uh, the concept of controlling infection in environmentals, when we started to realize that the, uh, the patient itself is really one thing, not separate little entities and sections. I mean, traditionally, we're taught in dental school that life ends at, uh, at the neck and doesn't exist beyond there. Well, as we became more understanding of our anatomy, physiology, and people as a whole, or the holistic concept, we realized that the influences of the head and neck have a dramatic effect on the rest of the body, meaning that any sort of uh, chronic or deep infections, any kind of, um, you know, let's say biologically hazardous dental materials have far-reaching implications. There are no barriers in the body that allow that uh, will not allow for these you know consequences of dentistry and the patient's own health and wellness uh, really not affect them. So through that over the number of years, uh, we realized the toxicity of heavy metals, uh, the, the effects of deep chronic infections associated with poor extractions, possibly a failing root canals or chronic infection from the, even the soft and uh, periodontal tissue once again, still had far-reaching implications uh, throughout the entire body. So the concept of biology is really to make the oral cavity in the head and neck as biocompatible with the rest of the body, meaning, in other words, non-toxic, environmentally safe for the ecology of the human body. So what are some of the types of uh, procedures or tools that a biologic dentist might use, which a conventional dentist uh, might not be equipped with? Well, first of all, like I said, philosophical differences. I mean, we really look at uh, things as far as materials and compatibility of materials. We look for toxicity. We look for rare materials that are non-toxic that won't challenge and uh, challenge the immune system in the patient. Um, we're very cognizant of heavy metals. We're co very cognizant of deep set infections as far as root canals and deep infections associated with that. So we're looking at that, <clears throat> once again, we're looking at the patient as a whole as a whole person. So we really assess their health, their wellness, the implications of the dentistry on their whole body and, uh, you know, the, the toxicity associated with that. So what will be different? I think procedurally will be different. Um, you know, we take, you know, the model that we've really developed and that uh, Dr. Thomas teaches for us is an integrative biologic dental medical uh, approach. And we really, what we do is, I mean, our definition really boils down to with our integrative model. And you really need a model to work with. It's called integrative biologic dental medicine. And I'll give you the definition so that that might help also. It's defined as dental medicine that partners the patient and the dental practitioner to develop and integrate biologically safe, effective, established, and emergent treatment modalities. So the beauty of the integrated model as far as biologic concern is really, it's not subservient to any one school of thought where what we do with our patients really is what do they specifically need? We'll put all medicine and dentistry on the same playing field and pull down. For example, you know, people have heavy metal toxicity. We know that the fillings that have been put in traditionally over the years are mercury-based fillings. Over 50% of those silver fillings, we call them, are mercury. And it is releasing. Every time they chew food and eat, they are releasing small amounts of mercury. So between the environment, the food supply, and fillings, we're finding that more and more patients have 
what we call heavy metal toxicity. So the difference between us and traditional dentists is that we have a multitude of precautions that we take for the patient. Number one, when a patient comes in, it's not like you're having a traditional filling done. The patients are completely protected and draped in, um, in mercury-resistant garb. Number two, when we do take the filling out, it is in an isolation chamber. It's a silicone cup that actually goes around and rubber or rubber dam. The tooth is isolated to prevent spillage of the mercury when it's released because the dangers associated with mercury fillings are when you put them in, of course, and of course the danger is when you take them out, when you drill them out, the aerosol associated with that. So we have techniques that protect the patient and the dentist uh, during those procedures. And that's all fine and good, but what's important too is that once these mercury fillings are removed, we put something back that is more biocompatible. Uh, with their particular system. So we have technology and techniques that we can actually take blood samples and match up what is most compatible to their immunologic system. One of the things I'd love to get your take on, because you're so involved with, uh, you know, speaking and training other dentists in the ACIMD, um, is if you could talk a little bit about kind of a, a macro view of where you see uh, the whole field of dentistry headed, and by that I mean including, you know, patient awareness, because it seems that people are becoming increasingly aware of toxicity and these issues, and and seeking out, um, you know, this type of treatment uh, in in all walks of their health, including dentistry. So, how do you see? How have you seen that, and how do you see that growing and and changing over time? Well, what's happening now is with public awareness. I mean, people are are really interested in longevity, but beyond longevity, they're looking for health, health and wellness. And part of that, the, the awareness is becoming the health and wellness associated with their, you know, their oral cavity and their head and neck. So what I see where dentistry is going in, in more of the biologic sense, it's more of like an integrated biologic dental medicine. There's going to be really kind of two worlds of dentistry. One is going to be the mechanistic model, which is kind of like the school dental model where you know, you're going to go to your, you know, absolutely your traditional fillings done, your bridge work, your cosmetic dentistry, all that. And then you can have the world of dental medicine where it's really emerging, where we're looking at the patient as a whole. We're really helping them to help themselves. And that's really the key. We're looking at how what our work does influences their body. Uh, we can, we take the time. You see, I think, you know, like I tell my, my docs when I train them, I said, dentistry is in a beautiful place right now. It's amazing, especially if you're in the biologic world, the biologic integrated model, where we're really helping patients to help themselves because in dentistry, it's a different model from the traditional medicine right now. Medicine in the, in the allopathic model right now, they're very restricted in what they can do. It's very brief. Put a patch on you, get you out. We're here in our world. We're able to take the time and help these people. We talk about you know, gut physiology, we help, you know, help their immune system, we give them, you know, supplements, we make homeopathy, you know, we talk about how we can keep them healthy, because we, you know, the beauty of dentistry is that we have the time and, and they pay for it to, you know, to allow them to help us to help themselves. And that's ultimately where, where we're really at through, um, through dentistry, biologic dentistry, a lot of our docs now that we're trained are becoming naturopaths also. So we're really integrating uh, those those procedures and concepts into our dental world. So it's becoming, you know, beyond just drilling and filling, it's really becoming a wellness program. That that leads me right into my next question, which was going to be uh, about how you see or how you you maybe any advice you have uh, for the way a, a practitioner or a dental practitioner might approach uh interlinking and, and intercommunicating with other practitioners to uh, best serve the patient. Because as you mentioned, uh, the conception in biologic dentistry is not of a patient as just a set of teeth or, or starting above the neck, but part of the entire system. So it would make sense, and I, and I know it's a question for a lot of dentists, uh, how they can get involved with, how they can better communicate with you know, other practitioners to all kind of coordinate and coordinate their efforts uh, to bring about the best health results. How do you see that taking place with the practitioners with whom you work? Well, first thing is education, is understanding what, you know, the language of integration or the language of biologic medicine. 
and uh, and develop a, 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 a common language with your practitioners. I mean, I'm lucky I have Dr. Thomas, I have a number of other practitioners that I constantly communicate with, and it's really a matter of educating the, uh, re your referral base so they understand the absolute implications of chronic head neck infection, heavy metal toxicity, you know, orthopedics of the head neck, and as far as even how a patient breathes and sleeps at night. These are significant things. And you have to, once again, you have to really develop a relationship with uh, these uh, other practitioners. It really develops down to what we call an integrative team, where you have uh, different individuals, you know, you're dealing with, dealing with, dealing with biologic, biologic, other dentists also talking to them. You're talking to uh, physicians. I mean, physicians now are becoming more aware on the outcomes, even post-surgically, that you know, if you have a chronic head and neck infection, whether it's a root canal, abscess, periodontal disease, all these different implications, it affects the outcomes of the surgery. So many surgeries have failed because of infections. And where the hell is the infection coming from? Well, it's coming from their mouth. There are no barriers here, you know. Unfortunately, gravity sucks and everything drains <laughs> down throughout the entire body. So, you know, it's really developing a relationship. And that's really what's important. And it's really developing what I call a sustainable relationship, you know, with your colleagues and, and developing that. But first of all, you have to really understand what you're doing biologically. What are your ultimate goals? What is your philosophy? What is your mission for your patients, you know? And we really, you know, my kind of mantra is really is that I'm trying to help them to heal themselves at the healing process. And, uh, and that's really the key, putting the onus of health and wellness on the patient. And as you guys have seen, you know, the worst patients are, oh, heal me, you know, heal me. Whoa, time out. I said, you, you know, I can help you, but I, you have to heal yourself. You know, you have to be your own best advocate. And that's one of the most important things. And that's why I love the integrated model, because what it does is it puts the patient right there up to you with the practitioners. You know, he, they're part of the team. They're helping really make some decisions. You know, once you see, listen, I've seen patients from, you know, even Dr. Thomas there, you know, the patients that really become their own advocates, do what they're supposed to do. You know, think about, you know, getting to themselves better, getting well. It's a whole multiple level thing of healing. Those become the best patients and those are the best outcomes. So getting back to the fundamental question is, number one, developing a quality relationship, a good common language, understanding, you know, what we're talking about, what are our ultimate goals. Because what's important is, I mean, in my case, I see a lot of patients have Lyme disease, have heavy metal toxicity. So I'm cleaning up that entire mess. I'm making homeopathics based on that, as those mercury fillings come out. I take samples. I, you know, imprint them in homeopathics. But I'm also working in conjunction with a doctor like Dr. Schultz, where he is really detoxifying and cleaning up the body as a whole. But he has to know what I'm doing, too. You know, how am I doing? What's the progression? And also, it, what's really, really important is that a patient comes in, are they healthy or at a point where you can start taking these materials out in dentistry? You can start taking out possibly heavily infected root canals. You know, it's not a matter of, oh, they just come in and take everything out and convert it. You know, these people have to be built up to a state where they can handle that process of detoxification and, and then the trauma associated with getting some teeth, unfortunately, taken out. Or can they handle root canals and, and therapy? So it's really important to get that, that moment, you know, when they're ready, that they can possibly detoxify and clean up all the residuals associated with the, the problems in dentistry. So lastly, could you tell us a little bit about the ACIMD, uh, what your role is there and where practitioners can go to get involved and where patients can go to learn more? The, uh, the American College of Integrated Medicine Dentistry uh, we formed it uh, as really a, a, a uh, educational uh, group um, for education, number one, for research, to continue on the work. Because we were all at uh, Kaplan University of Integrated Medicine one time, and that school closed down. So a lot of dentists, you know, trying to get their integrative or biologic training really had no place to go. So what we did was we, uh, you know, developed our entity and uh, developed a program that really deals with in the integrative medical slash dental uh, concept, meaning that it's very difficult for a practitioner to uh, go and learn or get an, a really deep overview of the concept of integrated biologic dental medicine. 
Meaning that, you know, you go, you get a little piece of the puzzle here, a little piece of, you know, I'm getting homeopathy here, Chinese medicine. Where what we do in our program, we bring our doctors right from the beginning and tell the story, in this case, of our, our practicing model, which is integrative biologic dental medicine. So they go to one place, it's a coordinated curriculum. They have a curriculum that uh, is designed for, and for X amount of 120 plus hours of education and a lot more hours of, of homework. It's designed a set curriculum, X amount of hours. They are uh, tested, uh, they have a board examination, they have to do actually verbal presentations. And what's really important is, is that to defining our model. And when our doctors are complete with this program, is they are, uh, they are board certified in integrated biologic dental medicine. In addition, we have a relationship with the American Naturopathic Medical Association that board of certified based on their, their doctorate in, in uh, dentistry, our work, our testing, our curriculum, that they'll also make them board certified naturopathic physicians. So it's a dual certification program. So conception, I mean, the point is, is they really have some place to go that put all the pieces of the puzzle together in integrated medicine and dentistry in a coherent, clear cut fashion. Now my role, I'm, a, I'm the president of the school and uh, my wife, Dr. Rockefeller, she's the vice uh, president for logistics and management. And uh, my job is to obviously lecture, but also to help coordinate our faculty and make sure the curriculum is constantly updated and managed correctly. That deals with the needs and the assess, you know, the assess needs of the individual students. So our, our curriculum is constantly changing, updating the newest and latest information. And as you well know, I mean, Dr. Thomas is part of our faculty, so we have the premier integrated practitioners of the world come in uh, and, and lecture for us and train our docs. Great. And what is the website that people can go to to learn more? Uh, ACIMD.net. Wonderful. Let me just confirm that. My son handles that. And we're updating that uh, website. As you know, as you know, it's always uh, some update going on. Always, yeah. Listen, you know, if, uh, any dentist that's interested in really understanding and comprehending the concept of biologics and dentistry, I mean, our curriculum affords that. And uh, I think this is really where the wave of the future is going. And uh, patients are looking for that. And, uh, and it's, you know, it's an exciting frontier. You know, the beauty of it is that, uh, you know, before I got into this whole concept, you know, the, the, the just drilling and filling teeth was just, I would tell you, I was cracking up. I said, what the hell am I doing? I can't do this for the next 30 <laughs> years. We're here. You know, this is a beautiful thing. I'm actually really like, feel like I'm helping people. You know, I'm educating the patients. I'm educating other doctors. So it's a really, uh, it, it's a fun time, that's to say the least. All right. And here up next to share her insight and definition of biological dentistry is Dr. Carla Yamashiro. Well, I'm going to start by giving you the American College of Integrative Biologic Dental Medicine's definition because it's a nice um, overview of biological dentistry. And so they say, quote, biological dentistry or integrative biologic dental medicine is dental medicine that partners the patient and dental practitioner to develop and integrate biologically safe, effective, established, and emerging treatment modalities is allowed for treatment that is not subservient to any one school of dental thought. End of quote. So, you know, I, I look at this definition as um, uh, that in this integrative biological approach, patients are really the center of the wheel and that they participate fully in their dental health. And um, also in this type of model, uh, we can uh, find treatments that are individualized. So it's not a one-size-fits-all type of um, type of dentistry. We're all different. I mean, our needs are different. One problem that we might have in dentistry um, with a tooth or, you know, with some dental disease, um, the cause could be different. So we have to look at all aspects of it and not, you know, not have a cookie-cut model, so to say, so to speak. So, um, you know, methods we use might be different um, depending on what the patient presents. 
I mean, we might look at um, not only the physical aspects of what is happening with uh, with the patient, but also look at uh, the mind and emotion, mind and emotional aspect of it. We might look at um, spirit or energy. So we're looking at the patient as a whole, because patients are not just uh, they're not just teeth, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they come with they come with um, the rest of their body parts. <laughs> so we really can't we really can't look at patients um, just based on their teeth. Yeah, we're more, we're more than teeth. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. A patient isn't just a set of teeth walking in through your door. Um, <laughs> could you talk a little bit more about that kind of connection between, um, you know, other areas of life, be it emotional, be it, uh, you know, physiological things that are going on, organs or systems, and and the teeth themselves? What is that connection? Is it Chinese medicine? Is it how do you uh, connect those two things together? Like as a biologic dentist, when we consider the patient holistically, um, like I was saying, you know, we mean body, mind, emotion, and spirit energy. So we do address physical components, you know, the mechanics, biochemical, physiological aspects of patient's health. Um, and even beyond on that physical plane, uh, to consider the physical body in its entirety um, because the mouth is really... Um, a reflection of the rest of the body. So, for example, we see inflammation of the gums. You know, you can bet there's going to be inflammation throughout the GI tract. Just one long hmm. tube from the mouth to the other end. So, the mouth is also the portal to the rest of the body. So, what we put in it matters. So, this includes foods that we eat and even the dental materials that we use. So, talk a little bit more about the location of things in the mouth like can you actually um, get a sense of what's happening in other areas of the patient's body um, by say mm-hmm. seeing the location of a problem in, in a particular tooth or inflammation in a particular area yeah. of the gums mm-hmm. yeah well yeah I'll give you an example I had a patient who came in because he had a root canal done on a particular tooth and he said that for months after he felt he didn't feel well um, he said, you know, his lymph nodes felt swollen to him. Uh, you couldn't palpate it, but he said to him it felt like it was swollen. And so understanding this particular tooth um, that was associated with the meridian of the lymph, hmm. um, I was able to treat his tooth for the physical problem that he presented with, but also refer him to an acupuncturist so that his meridian channel could be rebalanced. So, um, you know, it's important to um, to to know what's what's happening with the rest of uh, with the rest of the person as far as you know maybe other symptoms that are presenting uh, with the rest of their body, um, and even on an emotional level. I mean, we know that stress for example, causes, um, you know, high blood pressure to, a uh, high blood pressure. Um, if we're extremely angry, our blood pressure goes up. So we know that certain emotions and certain stressors can create physiological responses. So it becomes important then to know, you know, what is the state of mind of your patient and what maybe emotional factors are happening within their life. Because it has a direct relationship with, you know, what uh, what they might present with and how treatment might look. Everything's right. connected. Everything's connected. I'm curious to know at this point what type of additional schooling, um, you know, a, a holistic dentist goes through or that you've gone through to uh, learn all of these different modalities and make these types of various connections. Well, the... I, I received my biological integrative medicine certificate through the American College of Integrative Biologic Dental Medicine. And uh, what that did, though, is it really expanded my view 
of um, of dentistry and medicine in general. Um, you know, they brought in a lot of a lot of great teachers and speakers in their field, and uh, and just getting that exposure um, opened more doors. What does that type of a program consist of? Like, how how long is it to get through, and is that something that uh, that a dentist would decide to do, let's say, after coming out of conventional, uh, you know, um, medical school, dentistry school? Yes. Um. Yeah. We're we're all, you know, we all go to conventional dental school. We're all basically conventional dentists. Um. We don't. We don't. Um. You know. You know, do away with with conventional dentistry, but um, we integrate what we learn in conventional dentistry with biological dentistry. Um, so, um, so this is what this would be something a program that some that a dentist would go to after receiving their um, DDS or DMD uh, to continue their and expand their knowledge. Okay, so kind of to add another another pretty thick and dense layer of um, knowledge and information on top of the just anatomical functions of, of things that you would learn in dentistry school. Um, right. So I, going to your website, Dr. Yamashiro, I notice, you know, there's a lot of therapies that you don't see on a normal uh, you know, dentist kind of list of services they provide things like um, ozone and proper removal of amalgam fillings. Um, could you talk a little bit about some of those uh, types of services that you do? Uh, maybe starting with ozone. Um, sure. So, um, well, ozone is a natural way of killing bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungus. Um, basically, you know, these bugs just can't can't live in an oxygen-rich environment. So ozone is a way of producing that oxygen-rich environment. And it can take the form of um, ozonated water. We also use um, injectable ozonated gas. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really effective, natural, and safe way to to eliminate these pathogens. And insofar as um, amalgam filling removal, I know this is a, you know, I bring this one up because it's something that's increasing in people's awareness, even in, in general awareness, everyone is very, uh, you know, aware of mercury and the, the harmful potential side effects of, of mercury toxicity. Um, mm -hmm. So what what is the the approach of a biological dentist look like when it comes to filling and removal um, compared with say a natural dentist? What do you consider that maybe uh, I mean uh, that a conventional dentist might not consider when when doing those types of procedures? Well, well, you know, yes, yeah, certainly mercury is um, in amalgam filling is of a great concern uh, to biological dentists, um, considering. You know that um, over 50% of the amalgam content is mercury, um, and there's also, you know, um, great concern also when it has to be removed because um, because it's the vapors that you know are harmful, and so when it is removed with the drill, we we do inadvertently. Emit a lot of vapors of mercury vapors. Oh, really, I didn't know that. So, yeah, it's whenever the whenever the mercury is heated into its vapor form. I see. When it's harmful. Is um, that I, I've actually heard that even drinking, just that you mentioned that it triggered a memory that I've heard somewhere that even if you drink very hot liquids, hot tea or something, that it can leach a little bit of mercury each time from fillings. Is that possible? Is that true? Well, that's that's enough. That's supposedly enough to to release the vapors. Hmm. Um, even even your even your mouth's own body temperature wow. um, is enough to emit mercury vapors. So you know when we when we physically remove it with the high speed drill, 
um, there's a potential for an extremely high amount of exposure, you know, to the patient, but also to to us dental professionals. So it's really important, um, you know, that to use safer protocols. We're not completely eliminate the exposure, you know, but what we can do is we can minimize the exposure. Um, and that's really that's really the goal of um, the biologic dentist to remove it as safely as we can with, with you know as minimal exposure as we as we possibly be able to. And is that where also um, in some way supplementation comes into play? Because again, I think most people when they think of going to their dentist, um, and I'm talking about the conventional uh, you know mindset the mainstream, they don't necessarily think of their dentist prescribing supplements or things that help them with detoxification. Um, but I noticed on, on your website and with other biological dentists and holistic dentists, uh, they do offer a number of, of complementary uh, therapies. Right, right. And um, because, you know, once you... Um, uh, remove these these mercury fillings you know the real the real the bottom line point of this is is the patient and now you know what does the patient need you know um you know as far as maybe possible testing uh for toxicity and for detox um you know, we have to know what biological sy- systems now need to be dealt with and what needs support. Um, so I would say, I would say the very first thing uh, we look at is, is, is testing, to test to see if if there is a body burden even to begin with, because depending on that body burden, that will de- determine whether or not, um, or how we approach detox. You know, a person might a person might have ten amalgam restorations in their mouth, but if they're excreting it, excreting the toxin, then typically they're not having any symptoms. But let's say um, they're not excreting it, you know, then then we're having a backup. And, and then we start to see symptoms. Um, I, I like to explain to my patients in a way of um, looking at a kitchen sink. So, you know, you have to be aware of, of whether the plumbing is, is flowing or not, you know. Right. Um, let's just say, for example, like chelation, for example, it's, it's really um, popular. But... Chelation is actually pulling, you know, let's say mercury and other heavy metals from organs and, and tissues and uh, and then dumping it into the, the kitchen sink. Hmm. But if your kitchen sink is clogged to begin with and you're not excreting that mercury and all that junk, then chelation can actually be dangerous because then you're pulling out all of these toxic materials from organs and tissues, dumping it into a sink that's already clogged, mm, and, then, wow. and then and then and then you see crisis. Or or another example, you know, you have all of your silver fillings removed, your amalgam fillings removed, with 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 you know no planning whatsoever, with no testing whatsoever, and and dump all of that into the system. You have a clogged system that's not excreting. Where is that going to go? It, it has to back up. And so you, you, you know, sometimes you hear people say, or I do, and when I hear patients say, you know, they went to the dentist and got all of their mercury fillings removed, and and they feel sick. Well, it's probably because they were already. Uh, clogged, they were already not excreting the toxins that were already in their body, and now you've just 
overload them with, with, with even more. Wow, yeah. The body, the body can then, the body doesn't know, it, can, it can't, can't process that. Because yeah. it wasn't processing what, what was in there to begin with. So, so testing, testing then is, is really primary. I mean, without, without testing for toxicity, we have no way of, we we're only guessing. We'd only be guessing. I without, see. Without without first, uh, without first having a test to determine how much of a body burden you have versus how much you're actually excreting it. So I think yeah. having that broader view, having that you know that holistic view, the holistic approach is is really important. Yeah. And I think that's a great note to end on, which is, you know, holistic dentistry, biological dentistry, just to come back kind of full circle to what that really means. Because in this day and age, I've noticed that the word holistic gets used a lot, almost overused. And a lot of people just take it to mean in some way natural or not using, you know, medicine or, or not using conventional procedures. But really what holistic means is just that. It's a whole view of the whole picture um, as opposed to just one fragment of, of a bigger piece. And keeping things going, here's Dr. Will Backey and Dr. Jill Morris from Sarasota Dentist. Biologic dentists also, as a group, we tend to look at the mouth being the gateway to the body because that's where the start of the gut starts there in the mouth and ends down at the other end. But it is... Um, it affects all the biological flora in the gut and the bacteria that is in our mouth. It affects basically every organ in the body. And biologic dentists look at the effects that the existing flora or issues that a patient has on their whole body um, or anything that we do would cause on the rest of their body. Whereas in general dentistry back in the day when I was taught, we gave absolutely no credence to the rest of the body. We were just dealing with teeth. Mm -hmm. And it's only been very recently, like literally in the last year, that most general medical people had any kind of uh, onus or thoughts on the mouth giving rise to issues. Yeah. And so, and, and we, with the bacteria and the immune system, because of all the antibiotics that people have been on, their immune system is not working well. Now the bacteria invade the gum line, the gums, and you have these open wounds and bacteria pumped into the bloodstream all the time as well. So um, we, we like to look at the whole person and try to build the body and do dentistry that is healing um, as naturally as possible. There are some really great organizations that have good continuing education. Um, we're members of three different uh, biological uh, organizations. Uh, there's also a lot of ozone training. Most biologic dentists uh, use ozone, and there are ozone um, uh, organizations that are both medical and dental professionals uh, uh, go to, and we learn from each other. So ozone training, as well as the organizations, and then Burr and I both got our degrees in naturopathic medicine, um, just so we could understand even more the different uh, modalities of an integrative medical um, philosophy. Gotcha. Could you give me an example of what your approach would be to, uh, let's say, an initial consultation of, of a new patient? Well, but one of the things I was going to say off of that is when we do um, a new patient exam, we get their medical history. And for instance, a diabetic, um, there's no way a diabetic can be a controlled diabetic. In other words, really be able to streamline their treatment if they have gum disease. And so we look at, well, you're a diabetic, you've got horrible gum disease, we've got to treat that. Because most diabetics don't heal well anyway. But there's, if we don't control the mouth and the bacteria in the mouth, there's no way they can control their diabetes. Most general dentists don't realize that or look at that. It's not something that we're trained with 
in general, whereas a, a, a more biologic dentist is trained in that aspect. And then as far as the mercury removal, I'll let Dr. Morse Yeah, that. we we look at the mercury. We look at any any heavy metals. We look at, um, you know, how that can affect the meridians of the body, how it can uh, affect the cell communication. So, you know, we may ask questions about has the patient um, had any heavy metal testing to see what metals they may be high in. Um, you know, we... Uh, consider, uh, first of all, supporting them with IV vitamin C and um, get them on some chlorella, and then after the mercury is removed, then we'll consider some type of chelation therapy um, according to what type of heavy metal they, they may have uh, stored in their body. Uh, if they, a lot of people have teeth that were removed to do orthodontics, so we have to consider cavitations. Um, we have a CAT scan that also helps us to diagnose cavitations. Um, we, let's see, well, you know, we treat, we, we treat dry mouth with ozone reversing decay, as well as, you know, ozone to treat the gum disease, and just, we're thinking lower the bacteria count and also change the change the terrain of the patient so that they are better host to the whatever bacteria they may be um, and exposed to. My side of the process is surgery. So like when I have a patient comes in that has, you know, horrible teeth, full of infection and things like that, <clears throat> I have to really look at their overall body health and get them healthy with the IV vitamin C, uh, Myers cocktail, things like that, before I start taking out all his teeth because it dumps a whole pile of bacteria and infection into their system. And if they're not ready to take all of that that gets dumped in there, then it can make them extremely sick. Heart attacks, things like that can occur. Mm -hmm. How I'm yeah. curious at this point to know how um, how well informed or educated or curious would you say is your average patient um, because all of the treatments that you described are truly you know holistic and and require some in-depth knowledge of how all these different organs and systems uh, you know fit together and I think for yeah. the for the average person or the average kind of patient off the street going to a dentist uh, it would seem far removed for them anyway to go to a dentist and be treated for you know something or consider taking supplements um, so what, could you speak a little bit about the type of patients that you see? Probably a hundred percent of our patients finally understand the, um, the heart connection with dentistry. Probably 50% of our patients that call today are looking for a holistic and they're well informed. They've done their research on the internet. Um, they may be going through Gerson therapy with cancer, um, so Lyme's disease. Lyme's disease, and of course, those patients we seriously need to remove their root canal teeth and things like that. So, because they go on the internet and they find us through Google, you know, under the holistic dental, I would say a good 50% of our phone calls now coming in are patients that are looking for a holistic dentist and they are very, very well informed. And, you know, we still learn a lot from our patients, those yeah. patients. Um, and then um, probably the other 50%, we're educating them about their mercury. You know, they had no idea that there's a problem with that, you know, and uh, that's about what the ratio is right now. Yeah. You mentioned uh, the heart connection to dentistry. What, what is that? That uh, basically they have found living uh, in the plaque, uh, now they're believing, they used to think cholesterol was the, the bad boy for heart disease. Now they're understanding it's more inflammation and much of the inflammation is coming uh, from the bacteria around the teeth being pumped into the bloodstream every time a patient chews or brings their teeth together. Uh, they are pumping that bacteria into the bloodstream and through the heart. 
And so they have, um, of course, found bacteria from the mouth living in the plaques of the heart. Well, the, the number of inflammation. The recent reading I read, the uh, main bacteria in heart disease, and I can't tell you what that is, uh, is found in the mouth. And anything in the mouth, obviously, we breathe it, we drink it, we eat it all day long. Uh, it gets into our bloodstream through the gums very easily. Any bleeding, which happens on most people, um, absorbs it all. So that's where the heart disease they're starting to look more and more at that connection between the mouth and the heart and all the other organs. There is, um, most of us that are in biologic dentistry have either a, <clears throat> a flow chart on the wall. A lot of us have the apps on our phones now and, and computers, but each tooth in the mouth has a direct correlation to a body organ, uh, body part, joint, um, uh, different things like that, and so yes, you can make correlations to that. You can, and it can go either way. Like, let's say um, uh, a right bicuspid is, could be connected to the breast, um, but if there's a problem in the organ, it can also affect that too. So it can go flow either way as far as the problem goes. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And so for, for patients who want to learn more about biological dentistry, uh, if they're in Florida, they can find you. What is the information for, for your clinic? www.sarasotadentist.com. And that's a pretty thorough website. But we also have other websites. <sighs> you know, we have to... We, we have other websites that are... Uh, just geared towards the biologic patient um, because the mainstream dentistry, uh, we get a lot of pressure from them here in Florida. So, um, you know, we have to be a little bit careful how we advertise and things like that. So we, we have, uh, if they Google holistic dentistry in Sarasota, they'll find our other website. Okay. <laughs> well, worded, but um, you know we we're pretty. Our board of dentistry is not friendly towards holistic dentists. Yeah, as an example of that, we we fully believe that the old quote silver fillings, which are really mercury fillings, um, <clears throat> the ADA and the the mainstream dental think they're safe and fine, whereas holistic dentistry and biologic dentistry think that they cause a lot of issues. In fact, the mercury vapors that go into the brain and <clears throat> the leading cause of ticks and tremors and things like that um, and other diseases. And we have very specialized ways of taking those out. But again, we fight the mainstream dentistry that claims that they're fine and good and, and no problem. Um, we actually just read an article where there was a pretty major lawsuit settled it took 14 years to do it, and unfortunately, they didn't go all the way to Supreme Court, but I think that would have ended the use of mercury-based fillings. Really? But they settled it, so it didn't wow. make it out there. So, but there's those kinds of issues that we kind of deal with. Yeah, with we, a, we recently wrote an article <laughs> that came out locally, and, and Burr taught he does ceramic implants. There aren't very many in the country that do that just because they have no metal or electrical um, uh, interference in the body. And um, so, you know, some of the local dentists turned us into the board for, for that and said that mercury was okay. And so we, you know, we're, we want to do what's right for our patients and we're mm -hmm. going to practice this, but we, we're pretty low key as, uh, when it comes to some of the things that we say, like over the phone, we wait until the patient comes in to really talk one on one with the patient. Right, right. It's surprising to me still how um, careful you have to be when um, I would even say that it's kind of a you know among the mainstream understanding perhaps not the conventional medicine understanding, but it's definitely in the mainstream awareness that mercury is dangerous. You hear this all over the news. Everyone is up in arms about vaccines. It's huge issues on a daily basis. Um, so the fact that this is still, uh, you know, in question when it comes to 
dentistry when they're literally just putting mercury into your mouth uh, yeah. is really surprising. Yeah. Well, the, one of the things that we laugh about is there's only two places to put mercury fillings if we take them out or put them in. We can, we can only store them in a very specialized hazardous waste container that is dictated by the federal government, and they have to be picked up by a specialized service or in your mouth. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. So it makes yeah, no sense. It makes no <laughs> sense. Uh, do you know how that, how that got started? Why, why were you using mercury? Why what? I'm sorry. Oh, well, mercury fillings were developed back in Civil War times, and they were a great filling material of the day. But as everything else progresses, we have better and better things. It's a very cheap way to fill a tooth. It's very low cost, so a lot of clinics still use it. It's still the number one seller for most dental manufacturing, you know, supply companies. Um, and they claim, you know, there's a lot of claims to it, this and that. Um, but there's been numerous studies that have showed that um, the mercury goes through the system literally in less than 24 hours. And if there's a fetus, it goes into the fetus completely in every organ system they have. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and it's been done for years. They've shown this, and it still fights issues. I know, I think there's you see, somewhere between four and eight countries in the world that have completely banned the use of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, we're not one of them. We're kind of slow on the uptake of many of these things, just like I know the... Uh, Going through airport security is a similar situation that in Europe they, they ban those ProVision uh, X-ray machines and, and here they claim that there's less radiation than a cell phone. So Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, there's definitely a, a ways to go and a lot of room for progress. Um, in your experience, what do you guys see as being you know, the, the future kind of prognosis for, for uh, dentistry in general? Do you see it heading more more and more of uh, this biological dentistry becoming more in demand? I, I think that if as long as we have free internet um, and the people of the nation are becoming sicker and so they have the internet and they, they will drive the profession. It's always been that way. Mm -hmm. um, money drives the profession. And so when other dentists see that these patients, there's more and more patients wanting this, then more dentists will probably learn about it. Um, so I, I think as long as we have the Internet and the public can find answers to their problems, um, we'll be able to do this unless the mainstream dental boards just put crank the screws too tight. I mean, Burr and I have talked about uh, if it gets ridiculous here, you know, where would we go? Um, but I think with the public, it's going to keep pushing in the direction of holistic dentistry. I look at it like, you know, there's been a huge uh, insurgence of whole foods and um, organic. organic food mm. it's getting more and more and growing. And I think that's the same thing that's going to drive dentistry. You're going to get more and more demand. And as the demand grows, you know, dentists are going to have to learn it. Um, <clears throat> we ourselves, you know, one of our goals, and this is why we're doing the ACMOS and the Lecker instrument and the um, naturopathic yeah. medicine degrees, the BAH, all of that, is that we really want to open up a, a health clinic, so to speak, that has holistic dentistry, that has um, all of those other, you know, naturopathic medicine, a regular MD that believes more in holistic care, BAH, uh, um, all of that in one center, so you don't have to go anywhere else, because we find that's huge, especially in dentistry, you have one place to go, you don't have to go to 27 different spots, you're all right there. Right. And so we keep learning these newer and newer techniques so that we can do this and we want to build a center so that it will you know pass down from us as we retire and get older and it'll keep going because i really believe it's the future that sounds like a a great idea and it sounds like 
a great solution to you know what many view to be a current major problem in healthcare today which is quite literally the disintegration of all the different specialties how there's a lack of uh, common knowledge and a lack of communication about specific patients um, and like you mentioned in the beginning how a patient would you know come to a conventional dentist and just be treated as a set of teeth uh, and then they'd go to a different specialist and just be treated for you know a joint or a rheumatic problem or something very specific without ever putting all of those uh, critical pieces together. So I think that's that's uh, great to hear that you guys are you know have, have that type of intention to reintegrate um, all these different aspects of health into one into one type of facility even. Yeah. Yeah. You're wonderful. <laughs> so right now, if uh, where can where can uh, doctors go and where can patients go online to learn more about biological dentistry from a, a high quality source? High quality source. Um, yep. There's the IAOMT, which is the International Academy of Oral Medicine. Right, IAOMT. Yeah, okay. Well, ND. Huh? It's the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Dentistry, IAOMD. Okay. And um, no, toxicology. No, toxicology, excuse me, here's IAOMT, excuse me. And that's a great source for dentists to start learning and go through training. And and, and the public, HDA, which is the Holistic Dental Association, is a good one. Mercola.com. He's got some really? great information about root canals, hmm. about the, the vapor off-gassing from the mercury, um, about gum disease. Mercola.com has a lot of experts. He's got great videos of experts talking about this stuff. Oh, great. That's so patients, good. Patients will Google him, and then he we, he links to us, and they call us from his website. That's good to hear because I know a lot of a lot of patients, uh, you know, find him very very easily. He does have a very expansive website with a lot of information, so it's good to hear that that is accurate information and that it's uh, beneficial. I think it is. You know, you get tired of all the supplements that he sells, but he's <laughs> got a lot of really good information. There it is. And of course, don't forget to go to sarasotadentist.com as well as innovativemedicine.com where you can listen to more of these web events in advanced integrative medicine and learn a lot about what we do. So thanks again and have a great day. Um.